We'll use the lines as base geometry for our terrain mesh. In the project map, activate the zero ground floor. Right-click the W01 Site Worksheet in the pop-up navigator or W01 Site tab in the tab bar and choose Show as Trace Reference to select it as a traced view. Click on the arrow next to the Trace and Reference button in the Standard Toolbar and choose Trace and Reference from the bottom of the list to open the Trace and Reference palette. Open the settings of the reference, check the All Types checkbox, and click Apply Settings to All References to make sure the trace will always behave in the same way. Then close the palette. If you still can't see the lines, their layers may be hidden. Open the Layer Settings dialog by pressing Ctrl Command plus L and scroll down the list of layers. The layers of the XREF are separated from the native ARCHICAD layers. Click the eye icons to make them visible and then click OK. Activate the Mesh tool in the toolbox. If you'd like to skip to the next step, you can apply the Terrain Mesh Favorite from the Lesson 01 Favorites folder. Double-click on the Mesh Tool button. When the Mesh Settings dialog opens, set up the following parameters. Mesh Height, 2000 mm. Home Story to Zero Ground Floor and Elevation to Project Zero, minus 100. Select Solid Body as Structure. Set Soil as Building Material. Uncheck the Cover Fills checkbox in the Floor Plan and Section Panel. In the Model Panel, select All Ridges Sharp. Now let's go to the Classification and Properties Panel. In the Design Process, you must communicate your ideas with the other stakeholders in the project, like the owner, engineers, and constructors. Each of these stakeholders usually need different formats that are suited to their applications. ARCHICAD provides users with efficient and fine-tuned publishing procedures. These settings let you set different classifications and properties for any structural element, so you can control the virtual building appearance inside ARCHICAD while collaborating with the other disciplines. Later, we'll see ways to use these classifications in practice. For now, just set the structural function as a non-load-bearing element and the position as exterior. Then click OK. Select the rectangular geometry method in the info box and click on the two opposite corners of the site rectangle to create a mesh. Now select the mesh with shift click. Hold down the spacebar and click with the mouse cursor on the curved level lines one by one to add them to the mesh. Select Fit to User Ridges in the New Mesh Points dialog. To set the height of the points in the mesh that are on the same height level, select the mesh and click on a node of the second line from the right. When the pet palette appears, click on the Elevate Mesh Point button. Set Height to 500 and click the Apply to All checkbox so that all the nodes in this line will be elevated to the same height. Click OK. Repeat this action with the line on the right and set the Elevate Mesh Point to 1000. Now let's elevate the two corners on the right one by one. Click on the top right corner. Select Elevate Mesh Point again and set 1000 as the height, but leave the Apply to All checkbox unchecked. Otherwise, all points of the rectangle will rise. Repeat this with the corner below. With the mesh selected, 
Right-click and select Show Selection Marquee in 3D to check its shape. Activate the Fit in Window command if it's not fully visible. Go to View and click Editing Plane Display to turn off the editing plane if it's displayed.